Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together, saying, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. God, whose Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. It is he is. A reading from Isaiah. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him, for I am honored in the sight of the Lord and my God has become my strength, he says. It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the slaves of the rulers. Kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel who has chosen you. Hear what the Spirit of God is, is saying to God's people. God. Let us read the Psalms responsively by half verse. I waited patiently upon the Lord. He stooped to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the desolate pit, out of the mire and clay. He set my feet upon a high cliff 
and made my footing sure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and stand in awe and put their trust in the Lord. Happy are they who trust in the Lord. They do not resort to evil spirits or turn to false gods. Great things are, are they that you have done, O Lord my God. How great your wonders and your plans for us. There is none who can be compared to you. Oh, that I could make them known and tell them, but they are more than I can count. In sacrifice and offering, you take no pleasure. You have given your ears to you. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. And so I said, Behold, I come. In the roll of the book, it is written concerning me. I love to do your will, O oh my God. Your law is deep in my heart. I proclaimed righteousness in the great congregation. Behold, I did not restrain my lips, and that, O oh Lord, you know. Your righteousness have I not hidden in my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your deliverance. I have not concealed your love and faithfulness from the great congregation. You are the Lord. Do not withhold your compassion from me. Let your love and your faithfulness keep me safe forever. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sothenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For you in every way have been enriched in him in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by him you are called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. 
Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this the Son of God. The next day, John had a stand with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples turned and say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which is translated means teacher. Where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first got his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated, anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated in Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. What are you looking for? I hear that a lot. I've heard that a lot over my time, and I've, I've said that a lot. Sometimes while my children are standing and staring in the refrigerator, what are you looking for? We've received all of our things, our shipment of our house goods has shown up and going through the boxes and I'm sure I've asked Julie, what is it that you're looking for? <laughs> we say that a lot to each other. I was, I spent a great deal of my early time before I started my, my new life as a salesperson, as a sales trainer. And in retail, somebody will walk in the door and you will say, how can I help you? And they will say, I'm just looking. But I taught them to follow that up with saying, what are you looking for? And sometimes we'd get an answer. More often than not, we wouldn't. Today we see the two people, Andrew and his friend, standing with John and John tells them that this is the guy that I've been talking about. This is the one. This is the Lamb of God. And he passes by. 
And the next day he says it again. This is the one, this is the Lamb of God, and whom I've been telling you about. So Andrew and his friend decide to follow Jesus. And as Jesus is walking down the road, they follow. And he stops and he turns to them and says, What are you looking for? That's a big question. A very big question. I want you to take a moment and think about this. Rather than what I'm going to say next, I want you to think what you would say next. Jesus stops and looks at you and says, what are you looking for? I wonder what our answer would be. I wonder what would we would say. How would we reply to Jesus? Would it be something profound? Would it be something interesting? Would it be questions? Would we just fall silent? Would we just stare at him? Or would we have a long list of things that we want to unload on Jesus and say, this is what I'm looking for. Well, the disciples-to-be that day, when Jesus turned to them and said, what are you looking for? They said, where are you staying? Now, I'm not sure how theologically, how much we can go into where are you staying. I know that a lot of people go into that, but I think maybe that was just their next question. They wanted to know where he's staying. Maybe that's what came to their minds. Where are you staying? And Jesus said to them, come and see. Come and see. I'm thinking that no matter what those two would have said to Jesus, no matter how they would have answered him, he would have said, come and see. When he said, what are you looking for? And they, if they would have said, we're looking for hope, we're looking for peace, he would have said, come and see. We're looking for the man that we need to follow besides John, he would have said, come and see. We're looking for the Messiah, come and see. That day Jesus told them to come and see. And they went and they spent time with him. They spent the entire day with him. Come and see. This morning in our class, we talked about the importance of hearing the Word. Hearing the Word of God and having faith and understanding by hearing the Word. John reminds us that Jesus was the Word and the Word was in the beginning. And the Word was always with us and the Word has always been around. And we know that. God has given us the Word. God has given us the Word through the prophets. God has given us the Word through the Scripture. God has given us the word for generation after generation after generation. And now God is giving us the word incarnate. The word in Jesus. The word that tells them, come and see. I'm going to tell you the word. But I also want you to see the word. See what I'm saying. See what God is telling you. See the hope. See the grace. See the promise that God offers you. Come with me and see. And what they found must have been pretty impressive because that next day Andrew went and found his brother Peter and told him, you've got to come and see. But isn't that the way it's supposed to work? Jesus calls us. Come and see. Come and see what I have to offer. Come and see how I can answer the questions. Come and see if you come up with what it is you're looking for, how I answer that. Come to me and see. And when you see, I want you to go to another and say, I want you to come and see. I want you to come and see the God that I met, the Jesus that I met, the word that I heard. I want you to come and see the hope. I want you to come and see the glory. I want you to come and see how Christ defeated the darkness. I want you to come and see. Now I can use another word here with come and see. I could say evangelism. I want you to go out and evangelize. I want you to go and knock on doors and ask people if they've been saved or if they've found Jesus. I want you to go and tell people to come and see what I found. When I was uh, 
staying in a, in a rectory right next to a church similar to this setup. It was about eight years ago. Got a knock on the door. I was home for lunch. I had my collar on. And the woman came up to the door and said, I have some things I want to talk to you about. And she had her Bible and she had some literature. She said she wanted to tell me about Jesus. I said, that's terrific. I'm on lunch and I just have a little bit of time, but I'll listen. So she began to tell me about Jesus. And she said at the end of that, I'd like to come back again and tell you some more. Would that be okay? And I said, well... I suppose. What do you say at that point? That would be fine. <laughs> she came back again with her husband and they told me more and they gave me some more information. Again, I had my collar on and she said, okay, listen, I want to invite you to a meeting we're having. I know you're probably busy on Sundays, <laughs> but we meet on Monday so you can come on Monday. I will remember that person forever because of her persistence, because of her joy, because of her wanting to tell me that good news that she had. And she didn't care that I was a priest, and she didn't care that I probably was going to continue in my own church. She still wanted to tell me the good news. And she wanted me to come and see. Come and see. We're all called to go out there in our own ways and evangelize, in our own ways to show people how Christ works through us, to show people how we act as Christians. And it's not always inviting somebody to church, although that would be very nice. It's inviting them to see how you are as a Christian. It's inviting them to see how God is working through your life. It's inviting them to See what a Christian looks like. One who is kind. One who feeds others. One who clothes the poor. One who feeds those who are hungry. One who gives drink to those who are thirsty. One who will stand up for the dignity of another person. One who knows that somebody else is part of the body of Christ. It is our duty as people in this room, people who have seen and heard God to go out and model that so that people will see Christ in you. I know that the word and faith is believing, but also there's a lot to seeing. Seeing what a Christian looks like. And that's what we are called to do. Jesus continued to recruit people. He continued to tell people to come and see. He continued to allow that to grow. And the crowds grew and grew and grew, not because they kept Jesus a secret, but because they told their neighbors and they told their friends. We are at a time in our lives and a time in history where it's more important than ever that we let that grow and grow, that we let that hope grow and grow, the grace and the knowledge that we are all a community and that we are all important in the eyes of Christ and in the eyes of God. Right now, it is our duty in this room and as Christians to any way we can let people know how important they are in this kingdom of God. Sometimes we can tell them. Sometimes we just need to say, come and see. Come and see how I live. Come and see where I go to church. Come and see how I pray. Come and see how I listen. Just come and see. God doesn't want this hope and this dream to continue to be a secret. God wants us to spread the word. God wants us to invite people just as Jesus did to come and see. Amen.
Let us confess our faith with the, Unite, with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Creator and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us lift our prayers to the Lord. We pray for your church. Give us a light to the nations. Sanctify us in Christ Jesus. Call us to be saints and strengthen us to follow Jesus to the end. We lift our prayers to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the Salvation, O God, reach to the ends of the earth. May all the people know of your faithfulness and your deliverance. We lift our prayers to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all creation. Give us a sense of awe as we consider all the works of your hands. We lift our prayers to you, O Lord. Lord, we pray for this community. Make our footing sure. May our future be secured by your love and faithfulness. We lift our prayers to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those in need of your healing and strength. Lift them up and let them know just how great for them are your wonders and your plans. Today, we pray especially for Marissa, Renee, Sue, Francis, Carolyn, Claudia, Carol, Tobin Grace, Nash, Joseph, Jareem, Larry, John, Richard, Steve, Teresa, Cass, Rich, Kevin, Carolyn, Crystal, Sally, Marion, Corrine, Mark, Jan, Doug, Diane, Susie, and Chris. We lift our prayers to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died. In your great faithfulness, keep them blameless for the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Honor them in your sight forever. We lift our prayers to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our own needs or the needs of others, either silently 
or allowed. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by the Lord our God and by the Lord we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have come to us and forgive us, that we may be our right to your will and walk in your way to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive me all your sins, O our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please rise. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> um, I just want to remind you, in case you haven't signed up for a, a small dinner group, um, there are still some opportunities to sign up for different kinds of cuisine on different days of the week. So the sign-up sheets are back in the narthex. We certainly welcome all who would like to participate. Take some time. Look and see uh, what you might enjoy uh, participating in and sign up. Thanks. Hi, my name is Patty Robinson and I'm in charge of the Excellent Women's Luncheon. And I finally got the sign up sheet early. <laughs> so we will be meeting at Napoli in February the 9th. So please sign up or call me and let me know if you would like to come. So if I need to make a reservation, uh, I'd appreciate it. And I'd love seeing all of us excellent women there. Thank you. Sunday School Anne here, just to let you know what we did in Sunday School this morning. So we were still looking at the baptism of Jesus, and we're looking at he was the light of the world, and Jesus is God in human form because because we can't relate to just this immense thing so you would be really amazed at the theology and the deep thinking that these kids do so we knew that Jesus was the light of the world and Jesus's light lives in us so we went down the hall and up the church with our candles that we made out of paper singing this little light of mine and you might notice that it was one of the kids Evie's 
idea, we should put our lights on the baptismal font because that's what we were talking about, Jesus being baptized and the light of the world. So we have our candles over there on the baptismal font. I thought that was a good idea from the kids. Yeah. So just so you know, and then we baptized a doll. Each kid got to practice baptizing. So we're having fun. I think we had a good time. So just so you know, the kids are out there. We're having fun. Thanks, Ann. Thanks for your ministry. My name is Katie Lee, and I just wanted to remind those of you who are leader uh, of, of the Friendly Circle Hubs, um, we are going to be meeting after church down downstairs, and we have a, a little light um, snack first, and then we'll do the training. So just a reminder. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Rob Hogue, Junior Warden. Uh, a couple announcements. First of all, if you want to make a contribution to Episcopal Relief and Development, there may be some envelopes still out there, or you can just um, indicate on a check that you'd like that uh, to go to that. We're going to try to wrap that up today so that the church can make a uh, contribution. Uh, checks should be made out to the church with a memo line that says Episcopal Relief and Development. Uh, second, coffee hour uh, this morning for those who are not going to the hub training will be down the hall and using the portions of the parlor that are usable. Um, third, um, social club continues on Tuesdays from 11 to 3. This week it's going to be wild and crazy because I'm not going to be there. So <laughs> check it out. Um, thanks to Susan Hansen for stepping up to lead the, that effort. And then I want to note, and uh, Brian may be noting this as well, but the annual meeting uh, will be um, two weeks from today, Sunday, April, April, Sunday, January 29th, following service. I think we're going to do a lunch. Thank you. Yes, we will have the annual meeting January 29th downstairs in the in the uh, fellowship hall area downstairs. So I hope as many can come as are possible. Love to have you there. We're going to use this time as a celebration of what has been and what will be in our church. So it's more of a celebration with a little bit of a meeting attached. So uh, come come for the celebration, stay for the meeting. Um, and I think that's all the announcements I had. Yes, sir. Oh, thank you for asking. Yes, um, we will be having a memorial for Suzanne Grice next Sunday at noon um, over in the side chapel. Um, there may be more people here, I don't know, and we, we will we'll adapt and change. Um, Suzanne will be interned um, next to her uh, mother there in the columbarium. So noon next Sunday for Suzanne. I heard of a roost. Yes. I noticed that there were a small dedicated group of, I think they were all ladies who um, got together yesterday and completely redid the downstairs kitchen. And I haven't seen it yet, but I imagine it's fabulous. They labeled everything, they cleaned everything. Would they please stand up? <laughs> two men as well. Two men as well. Two <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you for doing that. It's wonderful. That is wonderful. Now we've got some closets I keep finding everywhere in this church that are filled with stuff that we don't use. So, um, Are there any birthdays for birthday blessings today? If anybody has a birthday this last week or this next coming week that would like a birthday blessing, I'd invite you to come forward. Any anniversaries to celebrate? Well, then let us bring our offerings and our oblations of our life and labor to the Lord.
Eucharistic prayer today is in your bulletin. And a reminder that this is God's people and all of our love. The Lord, Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate in the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error and of truth out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when we give thanks to you, we broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, Put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
Please rise. Julie, in the name of this congregation, I send you forth bearing these holy gifts, that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and the And now let us pray together our first communion prayer. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world, and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And may all the blessings of heaven be upon you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.